the talk around the crypto town still seems to be Chia. Tonight we're looking at how to plot and all the things you need to know when it comes to plotting. Mm -hmm. ah, I love it. Um, we're, we're actually going to be showing you on screen how to plot, how to use delays and things like that. So stick around. First of all, Jeff, can we hit a couple of those questions really, really quickly that have come in this week? Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. So right off the hop, Elko Brand watched our Q&A on Chia Volume 1 yeah. and asks, are you saying that four terabytes for plotting is a starting point or is it four terabytes total? Okay, so I would say four terabytes would be the very least that I would have in my farm. And that's really to do with the fact that the difficulty of Chia is exponentially growing. And when I made that statement, it was in fact down at about, what, about 150 difficulty. Now, in the past week, we have surpassed 1,000 difficulty. Now, you can figure, you know, without even understanding what that means, you know that it's harder to mine or to farm Chia at this point. Um, so the more space that you have dedicated to your farm, the more likely you are to win a Chia coin. And uh, if you have very little space, you're simply less likely to, to win that. Mm -hmm. I, I think the, the analogy that was presented uh, in one of our comments is that it's like a lottery in a way. Um, and I said, well, yeah, kind of. However, what's different about Chia coin versus a lottery is that when you buy a lottery ticket, and then they do the draw, somebody wins. Right. Right? But with Chia coin, yeah, somebody wins, but you don't have to throw away your ticket and buy another one. You still right. have your ticket. And that ticket is then a part of the next draw and the next one and the next one. Yep. So thinking about the size of your farm, basically think of those plots as your lottery tickets in a way, not to call this gambling or anything like that, but um, just to give it an analogy that makes a little bit of sense. Um, the more plots you have, it's like you've bought more lottery tickets. So what have you done? If you've got a hundred lottery tickets, you presumably have a more likely chance of winning than the person who has only one or two. Right. right? And actually this relates to a question we have from Ashrash Alsabag. Well done. Uh, and he says, I want to ask you about cultivating Chia coin. Okay. I'm going to start with 30 terabytes. Will this be profitable after a month or two? Will I even get profits? <laughs> and what are your expectations for the date of the pool? Okay, so that uh, that's a loaded question and there's two of them yes. in there. Well, let's hit the pool one first. Okay, we know that, as I've mentioned on the Q&A in the past, um, they are working on uh, pool code right mm -hmm. now. Now, there are some pools out there, but understand that those are like third parties that are trying to get started up before it's officially available. And we can't promise you that they're legitimate and, and some of them are even asking for your private keys and that to me is mm -hmm. a big no-no. Uh, so don't go there because it's just not worth the risk. So, um, okay, so first question is about- um, It was related about the 30 size. terabytes? Yeah. So, okay, so- So he wants to know profitability and will he see a payout in the next month or two? Okay, so again, not to not to put a, a gambling spin on Chia coin, okay? I don't want to do that because it's not really what it is if you're, if you're just using what you have. Sure, if you sink $10,000 into your Chia farm, you're gambling, okay? We're not doing that. You're not doing that. Um, but using the analogy and taking it a little bit uh, of a step further, if you have 30 terabytes, you have enough space for X number of lottery tickets or Chia plots. So you've got room for a lot. Well, let's find out how many. So we're going to go to chiacalculator.com. And okay, so you said 30 terabytes. So 30 first terabytes. of all, in Google, I'm going to go 30 terabytes in uh, tebabytes, which is 27 tebabytes. So we'll enter 27 into the calculator. Oh, and it changed it. Be mindful of that. Okay, so that's going to give me 273 plots. So like 273 chances to win at every time that the draw happens. So right now, as I'm recording this video, the, the expected time to win is five months. That is completely arbitrary. Throw it out the window. Are you going to win some Chia coin? No. Go into this expecting absolutely not. Okay. That's if you're going into it expecting to win Chia coin, then that's the gambling mindset. We're not. You, it says that you might get Chia coin in five months. It might be two years. It might be five years. Uh, it's really just the luck of the draw. So um, I would just go into it expecting, no, you're not going to get anything. However, the chance is with 273 plots or 30 terabytes, you could get a Chia, a Chia coin or a Chia block, which is two coins. 
uh, in about five months. But it's arbitrary. That's yeah. not a guarantee. That's not a promise. That's not, and, and as I say, it's exponentially getting more, more and more difficult. So uh, just three weeks ago, that might have said two months. Right. Right. So if you plot all that right now and you have all those 273 plots done, um, tomorrow it's going to be, it's going to say six months. Yeah. Right. Because the that's, going. that's the way it goes. Yeah. Now with the five months and again, that's kind of a, like you said, an arbitrary estimate mm -hmm. because we saw within the first week of Chia coming out, yeah. somebody had plotted and the expectation was a couple of months and they won two Chia coin within 24 hours. Luck of the draw. And everybody was like, God oh, darn you. <laughs> you know, and, and it just, it, it absolutely was that luck of the draw. Yeah. So, well, it's, yeah. it's like I say, again, an analogy, but you could have one lottery ticket and win. And the next guy who has 10,000 lottery tickets and blew their life savings on lottery tickets will not win. And it's completely, you have no idea. Right. But you can look at odds and say, well, if I have X number, then the odds are I'm going to win once every year. Right. Well, it's still arbitrary and it's still just a guesstimate. Now, is that because, and I mean, as I'm looking at your screen, I'm okay. seeing what the total capacity of the Chia network is. Ooh, yeah, it gets bigger and bigger. And then what your hard drive capacity is compared to that. So in this case, you put in uh, 27 tibibytes and you've got 0.0002% of the network. Sure. For and today. so, it, yes. Yeah. And so if the the idea is that you have 0.002% of the network and X amount of Chia coin are being released every so many minutes yeah. mm -hmm. that based on that mathematic algorithm, this is how long it would approximately take. But yeah. again, there's that luck of the draw. So if you're trying yeah. to figure that out, uh, Ashraf, look at the total network size compared to what you're putting forward uh, with your hard drive space and then go, oh, Okay, well, I've got this percentage. It's ever changing, and and you keep saying, Jeff, hard drive space, hard drive space, hard drive space is irrelevant. No, I get that number of plots because you could have a hundred terabytes with one plot, but but you're because it takes time to plot. If you don't have a good plotter, you you're going to take months and months to plot that. Yeah. So if that's the case, and we know that there's exponential difficulty growth, by the time you've plotted a hundred terabytes it's too late. Right. You've missed the boat. <laughs> well, and I mean, case in point for myself, like I've been plotting Chia now for three weeks, okay. nonstop. Uh, now it started off with really slow process over USB with mm -hmm. an NVMe before my, um, my PCI card came in. Okay. Now that I'm running uh, two NVMe's on, over PCI uh, cards, I'm getting a lot faster plotting process. Much faster with NVMe. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I am now up to... I think it was like 62 plots okay, great. in the last three weeks. It's really grown the last week and a half. Yeah. But it's taken me that long to get there. Wow. And so if you're mm -hmm. talking, what was it, 100 and... So well, we're using 30 terabytes for, for this example, but I, I'm saying like if you think you're going to plot 100 terabytes and start getting Chia, like the, there's it's a It's going to take a while. Yeah, Unless you've a got a time. massive system. <laughs> Which still, yeah, it's that's still not, take a while. that's not who we are. We're not, we're not building that system. Right. Because <laughs> you would have to have multiple MVMEs and multiple. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's just getting crazy. So I, I think that's all the time that we have for questions, if, if sure. we can move on. Uh, because I wanted to show you how to plot, because that is the most important thing to get you going with Chia. Now, we talk about using MVMEs. Why? Well, you've seen videos that say, oh, you can plot on a standard spinning drive. Don't worry about it. Don't get an NVMe. You can plot on a standard SSD. <sighs> Ignore those people, okay? Because I'm not telling you it's impossible. The statement is not, it's not possible to do this. You can take your bicycle on the highway, but you're not going to do 120 kilometers an hour. Great right? analogy. Well, it's the truth. So, like, don't don't get sidetracked by people saying, oh, you can do it. No. Listen to people who understand the technology behind it, and and you're, you're going to want NVMe because it is significantly faster at plotting, and the key thing is you need to get your drives plotted as quickly as possible. Otherwise, you've got a couple of plots and a whole bunch of empty space, and that empty space is doing nothing for you. It will do nothing for you until it's plotted. All right, so remember yep. that. So let's get into the plotting process. Jeff, I'm sure you've noticed plotting can be a little bit 
of a mathematical precision. You've got oh, to kind gosh. of figure things yes. out, right? You've got to figure out what your system is capable of. So understand that if you're plotting on NVMe and you oversaturate the, uh, the NVMe bus, which means it can't handle that amount of speed, then it's going to basically be like maxing it out and it's going to slow down the process. So we don't want to do that. Right. We want to try to find out what is the sweet spot for our system. And no calculator is going to tell you that. You have to figure that out. And the easiest way to figure that out, I think, Jeff, is to simply run a single plot. Yes. And that's going to show you, uh, it's going to give you a chance to benchmark things on your system. So first thing I'm going to do, do is uh, bring up my Chia blockchain software. You can see I've got 119 plots so far, zero uh, block rewards. Get used to that, folks. <laughs> <laughs> it's one true. day our day will come okay so under plots we're going to go add a plot and i'm just going to go okay k32 is the default yes plot count one uh and then show advanced options i'm going to just change this to four gigs of ram and four threads because that's what i'm targeting i've got 64 gigs of ram and uh, 16 threads so now my temporary location is my nvme drive so this is our plotter so i've called it plot nvme just to make it easy to pick and then my uh, final destination is my third field, uh, which is an eight terabyte hard drive. So I'm just gonna drop it in there. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna plot on my Q drive and then it's gonna move to my Y drive. So then I'm gonna create plot and it's gonna start plotting. So on Windows 10, it's really easy to bring up your task manager by right clicking on your taskbar, which I have on my left. You might have it on the bottom. Click on task manager performance and then click on that NVMe drive, the Q drive. And I can see as it's plotting here, it's sitting around 8, 12% usage. So that tells me I can easily plot another five or so without oversaturating the bus of my uh, NVMe drive. Right. But I kind of want to stagger those so that I don't also oversaturate my RAM or my CPU. So I can see immediately that that is only using this much of my bus to do a single plot. So I can easily um, increase that by adding more plots. So I can do that now and I'm going to start staggering. Um, normally I wouldn't start one immediately, but I want to show you how to actually kind of delay them, which is kind of like scheduling. So I'm going to set my plot count to 10 and I'm going to plot in parallel. And you say, well, Robbie, on your plot calculator at category5.tv, on free tools under Robbie's Chia plot calculator, if we punch in my two terabyte NVMe and my 16 terabytes of farm space, I've got 64, th uh, pardon me, uh, 64, what is this, AMD? Um, and uh, 64 gigs of RAM. This is my threads on my CPU and i9-9900K. So I see by default with four threads in use, I can get only four plots in parallel. So Robbie, how the heck are you doing 10? Because we're gonna use a delay so that we're never running more than four on that NVMe at a single time. Right. Because we don't wanna, well, you can run maybe five or six, but because once it's far along uh, in the process, you're gonna learn all this stuff as you go. It's an experiment. Uh, when you're far enough along in the process, you can, it shrinks it down. So mm -hmm. you're no longer taking up as much space and it's gonna start working on the other things and move them over. So the first time you run that one, not only do you need to know the bus saturation, but you need to know how long it takes. So honestly, let it finish, but watch it. Like check in every half hour and see how far along it is and record the time that it is when it gets to about 40 or 50% would be like a really safe cushion zone. You could do 30 to 40%. That's fine. I think it's between 32 and 39 uh, percent where it, it switches from NVMe to doing RAM and CPU. But, you know, I like just playing it safe, 40 to 50 percent. So I know that that's going to take about 120 minutes to get there. So that's where I want my delay to be so that it's going to start plotting and then it's going to wait two hours. Then it's going to start plotting the next one. And it's going to wait two hours. And it's going to start plotting the next one. I could probably even do 90 minutes with my system because of the speed that I see on that bus. Um, so I can do that. I can say, okay, delay 90 minutes. And you're going to figure that out from that one plot that you ran the first time. Remember, I'm, I'm proceeding just for the sake of the video, but I, I've already run that and I know how long it takes to plot a single plot of Chia. So, uh, so I'm going to set that to 90 minutes delay. I'm going to set this to four gigs and I'm going to set this to four threads. And then I'm going to set the same drive for my plotting and the same destination for my farm, field three. 
field one and two is already full. There we go. So we are going to do uh, 10 plots, but we're going to delay each one. So it's going to start one right now. So I'm going to have two running because I've already started one. And it's going to wait an hour and a half, then it's going to trigger the next one. And it's going to wait an hour and a half, and it's going to trigger the next. So by the time it gets to the third plot in my 10, it's already almost finished the first one that I started. So we've got that kind of overlap happening, and then it's going to move those off of my plotter and onto the farm. So this is the first one that I started. You can see it's already at 1%. This one here is the first one in the kind of um, schedule. So after 90 minutes, it's going to trigger this one. 90 minutes later, this one. So that's just going to go and go, Jeff. And yep. in inevitably, uh, probably by tomorrow morning, I'm going to have those 10 plots. Which is amazing. Mm -hmm. So you're on that kind of math, you're able to get 30 plus plots a day. I can actually show you that. Um, so if I bring up my plot, uh, my farm. So let's, uh, let's do that. So I told you I'm working on farm number three right now. Uh, field three. There it is. So we can just pick a, a date where I know that I had it running. So here's the 1st of June. And you can see 1st, 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 1st. So this is my plotter running. And I got, let's see, I'm just going to highlight all those. I got 16 that day. Okay. On the 31st, I got 14. So no, not quite 30. Okay doesn't look like, um, but still doing pretty well. Yeah. So 16. All right. And see my system at home, I'm averaging about 10 to 12 a day. Yeah. It's, it's a slightly slower processor mm -hmm. than yours. And so that impacts it. But, and I, uh, again, I'm being very conservative. I'm, you are, I'm avoiding any kind of crisis situation where I run out of space on my MVME and it can't move the, the plots or can't create them. Yeah. Um, I'm avoiding all that by just being really like playing it safe. You could speed that up if you were to meticulously figure out where is the proper time. I'm arbitrarily saying 90 minutes approximately. Uh, I think I've been plotting at 120. Right. So, you know, I, uh, this is going to be faster than what I've been doing in the past. Right. So. But keep in mind, if you start using your computer for regular everyday stuff, it's going to impact your speed. That's why I've been kind of playing yeah. it safe. So <laughs> if you know, say you're going away for the weekend there you and go. you're not using your computer, maximize your plots. That's a 30 plot day. That's right. <laughs> and make it happen. But if you're using your computer throughout the day, pull it back. You gotta you gotta vary that based on your usage, otherwise yeah. your system's gonna drag slow. And and I will I will mention when I first started I am my MVME on a USB, Ew. it was not good. No. Do not do MVME through a USB. Well extender. it's not truly NVME then, is it? Because... No, it's simply <laughs> USB. Um, yeah. so I ended up putting it, like I said, on a, a PCIe one riser. You've got yours on PCI four. X4. X4, yeah. 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 So mine is not running at full capacity for that NVMe, simply yeah. because I don't have that the spots on my hard drive. Yeah. Or my uh, motherboard, I mean. Just looking at the USB thing, because some people are probably thinking, oh, well, you know, USB with UAS is going to give me up to, you know, five gigabits a second if it's USB 3. Nope. Uh, uh, yeah. But remember, see, I'm moving really, really fast here, but gigabits per second. Right. Remember that the measurements are different. So when you look at the speed of an NVMe drive at 2,000 megabytes per second, and you think that you're, oh, well, I've got a 5 gigabit USB. Well, 5 gigabits is only 620-something megabytes. Yep. Right? So it's a completely different measurement. you got to convert that. Same reason I'm converting from terabytes to tebabytes. Right? Because it's not the same measurement, even if it has a similar acronym. Um, so that's all the time that we have. Remember, uh, plotting is very complex. I understand that. Jeff understands that. But we're pretty far along in our understanding on how it works and how to maximize the performance of our plotter. And we're going to be looking at farming as well on a Raspberry Pi, moving our, our plots over to a Raspberry Pi farm. Um, so hey, if you've got questions for us, of things that we've covered up to this point, please comment below. If your question is about something that we have not covered, and make sure you check out our videos on our channel, Linux Tech Show on YouTube. Um, if we haven't covered it, hey, ask it, and it might make it into the next Q&A. So uh, thank you so much for watching, and good luck with your chia farming. Take it easy, everybody. Bye.